Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and let's paint this Saurus Scar Veteran using contrast paints and a few highlights. I wanted to paint this model fast, but also have it look good as a centerpiece, so I'm going to approach this model with a kind of hybrid army painting style. And what I mean by that is I'm going to put more effort in the areas where I feel it really matters, and less effort where I feel like it doesn't need it. So let's go ahead and dive in. I cleaned and assembled all the parts, and to make painting easier I put the rider and shield on corks to paint separately. I drilled small holes and glued in pieces of paper clips, making sure to drill the holes in areas that I knew would be covered up after assembly. I primed the model with a gray primer, followed by a few coats of white paint with my airbrush. You could just as easily prime the model with white, wraithbone, or gray sear sprays and get great results too. I began with Skeleton Horde, thinned slightly with contrast medium and I painted this on the belly and legs, making sure to keep the paint thin and even, and working one section at a time. I don't want the paint to pool anywhere except the deepest recesses, so I'm making sure to soak up any extra paint. I want to have a blended effect on the belly and tail, and it's very easy to do while the paint is wet. Just apply paint to one section of the model, rinse the brush, wipe most of the water off on a paper towel, and then use the damp brush to soften the edge of the paint. Next I want to mix up an orange color for the scales. Fugan orange on its own is too weak, and Magmadroth flame is too strong, but a 4 to 1 mix ended up being just right. Normally I use a wet palette, but I prefer using a plastic well palette for runny, fluid paints. Just like the skeleton horde layer, I worked on one section at a time, keeping the layer thin and even. I blended the orange paint in the same way, just rinse the brush, wipe it on a paper towel, and then soften the edge. I want to reinforce the red color a little bit more, so I made one more mix. This time it's four parts Fugan Orange to one part Blood Angels Red. Some folks may say that mixing paint takes too much time, but I would encourage you to try it out, and in many cases it can actually save time, especially if you're painting a whole army. Check out this video here where I show how to mix up an entire pot of a custom color. I wanted to add some more depth, so I shaded the scales with Karaberg Crimson. This layer may or may not need blending. I blended out a few areas where it looked like it needed it. With the Karaberg Crimson dry, I wanted to darken the scales a little bit more using some Nuln Oil, focusing more towards the spine. Just like with the other layers, I blended it by rinsing the brush, wiping it on a paper towel, and then running the clean brush along the edges. You may want to apply another layer or two of Nuln Oil, depending on how dark you want the scales to get. I ended up painting two more layers, with each layer covering a progressively smaller surface area. Next I painted the mouth and tongue with Sigvald Burgundy. Don't worry about avoiding the teeth, it'll be much easier to just paint over all them anyway, and we can touch them up later. 
After painting the burgundy, I thinned down some of it into a glaze and painted it in the corners of the mouth, just to add a little extra color. The model on the box has blue eyelids, which I think look pretty neat, so I quickly base coated those with Fenrisian Grey. When the grey was dry, I painted a layer of Pterodon Turquoise. I put on a little extra paint so that it pooled and made the recess shadows a little darker. If you need to touch up any of the scales around the eyes, a thin glaze of Wild Rider Red will make a close match. Next I base coated a few areas with Dawnstone, the ropes, the claws, and the stone part of the saddle. I want the stone to have an old, mossy kind of look to it, and I'm going to use Mortarian Grime and Basiliconum Grey. I put both colors down on my palette and switched between the two. A stippling kind of motion with the brush can help make some organic looking variations in tone. I painted the ropes and claws with Black Templar. While I had the Black Templar on my palette, I added a small amount of water and picked out the spikes on his back. After the shades dried on the stone, I used an old brush and dry brushed with Dawnstone. Light, circular brush strokes can give a better result. I mixed some bone white into the gray and dry brushed further. Finally, I gave the stone an overall glaze of Mortarian Grime to tie all the layers together. Next I base coated the leather part of the saddle with XV88. Followed by a shade with Agaros Dunes. Then I used a little bit of Nuln Oil on a very fine brush and painted a thin line where the leather and stone meet. With some thinned black paint, I added a thin black line around the gold bands and any other areas that needed to be defined. I also painted the eyes black in preparation for the next step. I painted the eyes with Dorn Yellow, followed by a black line for a pupil. Next I picked out all the teeth with Bone White. I base coated all the gold areas with Retributor Armor. 
You may want to thin the paint slightly and apply two layers for an even finish. Next, I shaded the gold with Magos Purple. I really like the look of a purple shade over gold. It's not used very often, and I think it gives a unique finish. After the gold dried, I base coated a couple areas on the banner icon with Fenrisian Gray, as well as the big tail feather. I want to make this icon look like green marble, so I began by painting the whole thing with a generous coat of Dark Angel's green contrast paint. While the paint was still wet, I rinsed my brush, wiped it on a paper towel, and then used the damp brush to make a few streaks running down the surface. After that dried, I used a fine brush to add a few thin lines with Dark Angel's Green. Next I painted the gemstones with Eldari Emerald. I wanted to make a blended effect on the big tail feather, so I began by painting Mantis Warriors green on the top half and Aldari Emerald on the bottom half. I grabbed a little bit more Mantis Warriors green and blended the two together while they were wet. Lastly, I painted the feathers with Cassandora Yellow, Magmadroth Flame, Sigvald Burgundy, and Mantis Warriors green. When those were dry, I gave them all a second coat to deepen the color. At this stage, you could call the Agridon finished. I'll show how to highlight and bring it to the next level later, but for now, let's move on to the Scar Veteran. I like the pale look of the box art, but I want to make them more blue. I mixed two parts Apothecary White to one part Aethermatic Blue, and painted over the skin and scales. Check out my Starborn Saurus video here to see a similar kind of color scheme. Next I painted the scales with Space Wolves Gray contrast paint. There are a few areas where the scales meet the skin, and I blended the edge. Just like the other areas that I blended earlier, rinse the brush, wipe it on a paper towel, and run the clean brush along the edge to soften it. I wanted the gray scales to be just a little bit darker, so I painted a second layer of Space Wolf's gray. I painted all the ropes and gold armor the same way as the Agridon. Then I chose a few areas to paint with the green marble effect, so I began by base coating those areas with Fenrisian Gray. When that was dry, I painted a generous layer of Dark Angel's green contrast paint, and while the paint was still wet, I quickly cleaned my brush and made a few streaks across the surface. After the green was dry, I went back in with some thin lines of Dark Angel's Green. The next step is optional. I wanted to add some lighter veins in the marble, so I thinned down some Cyberite Green into a glaze-like consistency and painted a few transparent lines going in different directions. Then I used Cyberite Green with less water and carefully painted the stronger color on all the edges.
Next, I thinned down some white paint with water into a milk-like consistency, and I painted a few highlights on the edges and corners. Use a very fine brush, and make sure to paint the highlights sparingly. If you make any mistakes, it's very easy to touch up with some Dark Angels Green contrast paint. Finally, I thinned down some Dark Angels Green with several parts water, and I painted a thin glaze to tie it all together. Now let's paint the feathers. If there's any spilled paint on the feathers, make sure to touch it up with white first. I want the feathers to be yellow, orange, and red, and I end in yellow will make a good base coat for all of them. Then I painted the feathers on either side with Magma Droth Flame. Then I painted the next feathers with Blood Angels Red. I thought these edge pieces were feathers, and I painted them with burgundy, but then I realized that they were part of the gold armor, so I'll touch that up later. With the feathers base coated, it's time for some quick and easy highlights. I used Dorn Yellow to highlight the yellow feathers. Then I highlighted the orange feathers with Fire Dragon. And finally, I highlighted the red feathers with Wild Rider Red. Now it's time to start highlighting some of the other colors from earlier. I started by highlighting the claws with Eshin Gray. Next I highlighted the ropes and the claws with Dawnstone. Then I highlighted the gold with some slightly thinned Retributor armor. The purple shade from earlier dulled and darkened the metal, and the glaze will help restore the shine. Be selective and pick a few areas to highlight, and leave the other areas dull. Then I highlighted most of the edges with Stormhost Silver, thinned slightly. This highlight is optional, but I think it makes a great looking effect on the gold. Next I highlighted the burgundy feather with pink horror. Then I highlighted the light green feather with Dorn Yellow. I used a mix of Moot Green and Dorn Yellow for the big tail feather, with more Dorn Yellow in the mix for the top of the feather, and more Moot Green at the bottom of the feather. At this stage, all the pieces are finished, so I assembled the model with super glue. There's a lot of empty space on the base, so I glued a few pieces of cork tile with super glue. I applied a heavy layer of textured paint with an old brush, and before that dried, I sprinkled on some coarse gravel and fine sand. When that was dry, I painted the whole base with a layer of Rhinox hide, followed by a dry brush of Mornfang brown, and then Baylor brown. 
the rocks were painted with Dawnstone, washed with Agrax Earthshade, dry brushed with Dawnstone, and then dry brushed with a mix of Dawnstone and Bone White. I painted the edge of the base black, applied a few patches of static grass with super glue, and then I added some model railroad bushes. And here's the finished Scar Veteran on Agrodon. All the bright colors were a lot of fun to paint, and it really makes me want to paint up an army of these guys. Would you make all the dinosaurs red like this one? Or do you think each model should be different? I also realized we made it all the way to the end without a single Jurassic Park reference. Now that I think about it, I really should have put a tiny can of shaving cream on the base. Oh well, maybe next time. Thank you so much for making it this far to the end of the video, and for all of your kind comments. Please don't forget to click the like button if you liked the video, and subscribe to make sure you don't miss any future tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy painting!